This zombie apocalypse mod pack has a bigger focus on survival and exploration so that you can actually tell a story in your next 100 days video. And don't worry about not being able to run the pack, my PC is so old it still has a disk drive, and yet I can run this pack with shaders. So. First, we need to turn the world into a mid-apocalyptic world. The zombies have basically taken over, but there are a few areas they haven't been able to conquer just yet. To do this, we'll have to completely change the way Minecraft's default zombies look, act, and spawn. We want zombies during the day, so I've gotten day zombies rebooted. Just in case you couldn't tell from the title, it, it spawns zombies during the day. Now, you can have zombies during the day, but they're, they're just gonna catch on fire. Unless you have the Undead Zombies mod, which introduces a toggleable game rule which will keep your zombies from toasting during the day. Normal zombies are kinda dumb, so I've added two mods to make them a little more challenging, a little more interesting, shall we say? The first one is Zombie Awareness, which will alert nearby zombies if you take damage or break blocks, and light will also attract them. The second mod is Enhanced Zombie Hordes, which sounds scary, but it's nowhere near as bad as Epic Siege mod. Basically, they can climb over each other, throw baby zombies over walls, and break leaves and ice. Now, considering this is a zombie apocalypse, it would make sense for only zombies to spawn. So we'll be using bad mobs to disable skeletons, creepers, spiders, and endermen from spawning naturally. The unfortunate part about this is, since there's no spiders, you can't get spider eyes for weakness potions. But I fixed that. I fixed it. You, you thought I didn't fi- I fixed it. Yeah, suck my cock. <laughs> so I included extra zombie drops, which will have zombies randomly drop gunpowder, spider eyes, and bones. I don't care enough, but if you feel like it, you can go into the config files yourself and make them drop ender pearls too. I've also chucked in more zombie villagers just in case you decide you want to reclaim your world from the zombie horde. Now that you have a zombie army ready to knock down your door and tell you the good news of our lord and savior Kai Extreme, we need a visually pleasing and fun to explore world for you to expel them from. I really, really wanted to use a mod like Terralith or Tectonic, but when I started adding in all the structure mods, the mob spawning and terrain got really funky really fast. So instead of going too crazy, I opted for Biomes of Plenty as my world gen mod, and I would have used, oh, the Biomes you'll go, but Biomes of Plenty has just, it, it has more compatibility simply because it's been around longer, and it still adds some very nice variety and color to an otherwise lifeless world. Deciding which structure mods to use was way more difficult than it needed to be, but I think I found a great mix. First, I knew I wanted Towns and Towers because, oh my god, those pillager towers, they looking kind of nice, you know what I'm saying? I drink caffeine. And then like halfway through recording the voiceover for this, it kicked in. I also had a choice theorems overhauled villages because I kind of needed some overhauled villages too. And, and cool part, they will spawn at the same time independently of each other and they're both compatible with Biomes of Plenty. Love that shit, when I don't have to mess with stuff. I don't even know how to mess with stuff, so I'm, <laughs> I'm just glad it works because my eyes don't know how to code. The problem is both of these mods add villages with lots of life and the world is supposed to be in the middle of an apocalypse. So that's where Lost Cities comes in. If you have the preset to Wasteland and you make the rarity point 003, you'll have a decent amount of cities without overwhelming the landscape. Feel free to tweak with those settings. Point 003 is my perfect number. You might have a better one. Lost Cities will cut into the terrain, but unless you're in a particularly mountainous region, you really won't notice it that much. That being said, you probably should turn off railroads because it clashes so hard with world generation. I've also added immersive structures so that randomly you'll come across some ruins that might have some nice loot. Having all these new buildings across the landscape is great and all, but traveling between them sounds not only dangerous, but incredibly inconvenient. So I added the Waystones mod, which is unfortunately only compatible with Choice Theorem's overhauled villages. But since they will also spawn randomly throughout the world, you can just bring a few and leave them wherever you like. I think. I did not actually test this, but they're craftable. I think, but you might need an Ender Pearl, so you might have to actually go to the config files of extra zombie drops and make them drop ender pearls. Listen, don't, okay, I'm not a coder. I just take what I can get. Listen, don't hurt me. Please subscribe. Waystones has a compatibility mod with Zero's minimap, so that's the map mod we'll be using. All these structures are great, but what about the wildlife? It would be pretty boring if we upgraded the structures and the landscape, but all that inhabited them were sheep, cows, and zombies. So I added Alex's mobs to give the wildlife a variety and serene seasons so that the landscape and weather will change as you progress through your journey. Both of these are compatible with Biomes of Plenty without any extra configuration needed. Thank God, because again, I'm not a coder, so if it wasn't compatible, you'd all be screwed. As a side note, I've also included Enhanced Celestials, which adds a night event where sleeping is disabled, and then mob cap and mob spawn rates are increased. Again, neither the end or nether are modified since the goal is survival, not progressing through the actual game. They are still enabled, just in case you need to grab some blaze powder, or 
you can modify the zombie drop config files for them to drop blaze powder. Go, go crazy. I don't, I don't care. Speaking of survival, these are the mods I added to make your journey just a little more interesting. I picked Farmer's Delight as the base food mod, but the wild crops won't spawn with biomes of plenty. God damn it. To fix that, I've added farming for blockheads, which adds a market stall where you can buy all the seeds you need. A little inconvenient, absolutely, but still worth it. I also added Cultural Delights and Alex's Delight just to give you more culinary freedom and opportunity for creativity. No home base would be complete without some furniture, so I added Macaw's Furniture, which has a compatibility mod with biomes of plenty so if you wanted pink furniture you can now have pink furniture wow so pink so beautiful do they have purple oh my god i've also added survive which will add a thirst bar and make you suffer damage if you are too cold too hot or overworking yourself unfortunately none of the drinks in farmer's delight will replenish your thirst bar just in case you do end up dying i've also included the corpse mod which will make finding your stuff again much easier now for resource packs since Biomes of Plenty alone adds like a hundred blocks, I can't really add better vanilla building or another great pack. However, I did add Tissues Zombie Pack. Tissues? Tissues? I don't know. How do you pronounce? We are looking at how to pronounce this name. The name of this Chinese dash. General Cao. <gasps> General Cao! <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not even how the zombie pack is spelled, so I can't help you. If you think your PC can handle it, you can also enable the fresh animations pack, which will spruce up the mobs even further. Alex's mobs already have pretty good animations, so don't worry about that. Dynamic surroundings is a must-have, sort of. I love anything that increases my immersion, and dynamic sounds does that for me. But I do recommend that you turn down the footstep noises and the jumping noises, because those can get kind of annoying. Now for the shader pack, I used Makeup Ultra Fast. It runs very well on my PC, and it adds a very nice touch of realism. For most of these to work, you will have to add Optifine, and you'll have to do it yourself. I'm really sorry. Now, of course, all the resource packs and the shader are optional. So if you're experiencing harsh frame drops, then just don't use them. That is all. Thank you and good night.